the story of the British Rail simply told. John Higgins missed an awkward black off its spot with the rest. O'Sullivan stepped in with 79 to extend his lead to 6-3. So, the concluding session underway. Uh, anything that you saw of significance in that frame? Normal service resumed. Mm -hmm. Straight in there with a break of 79. Uh, fantastic in the balls. Every time he's in amongst the balls, you do think he's going to win the frame in one visit. And uh, it's very difficult to play against. I mean, that's pretty obvious, but I mean, every single safety shot becomes even more important. And the chance if you do get them in the balls, that becomes more important because, I mean, he's playing like a runaway train. Steve, if you're in John Higgins' seat, well, what are you saying to yourself before the final session starts, and what are you saying to yourself now? Well, I'm not too sure, really. You, you know you're up against a player who's playing very well. You just hope that you get the better run of the balls. You hope things go your way. You get off to a good start. A quick start was very important for John Higgins, um, and he hasn't got it. So the hole is becoming deeper, and um, it's getting harder to dig yourself out of it because the chances that you get seem to be more important when you get them. And you say to yourself, Thank if you I get a chance, head. I just have to take it. And that adds added, pre adds added pressure. Yes, there's the problem. There's the problem. Uh, and you've got to try and play as relaxed as possible. But you can't help thinking that you've got to make the most and convert your chances. Ronnie breaking off left-handed again, and then I think. Back to Clive and Dennis. He seems to be doing that a lot. I don't know why, but uh, it's a textbook break-off shot. He's left the cue ball exactly where he's supposed to leave it from the break off. Tight on the ball cushion behind the green. An awkward angle this red. If he was to take the pot on and that would be very difficult with the cue ball on the cushion the white would be heading over towards the red and black so that's why it's not really an option for John if he takes it on it's I didn't think he would you just can't afford to leave Ronnie in amongst the balls straight away not when you're 6-3 down he needs to create an opening for himself John he needs to play a couple of good safety shots to force Ronnie into making a mistake. But Ronnie's tactical play in this final has been superb also. It's a great winning formula. You can't beat that player. Good safety player. When you get a chance, you clear the table. <laughs> O'Sullivan aspires to play this game perfectly. He never quite can. Even he can't, except in uh, spells. But uh, he relishes every challenge the game has to offer. All the strange positions the balls can get into. A generous round of applause for a very good plant and a little bit of good fortune this time. John wasn't sure what the white was going to do and I think he needs a little bit of uh, run of the ball. Now, how many can he make from this chance? Yes, Higgins needs to start his counter-attack here. Seven. Black's still a little bit awkward. He's got the pink that's available. If he can get on one of the reds, either side of the black, he could develop. And that's what he's tried. If he can pot the red and, and nudge a red away from the black, he could open things right up here. 14. Just depends on the angle he has. That's okay. He can just run through and nudge that red away. And now he's got them open. 
I just feel, Clyde, there's a lot of snooker left in this final because John Higgins uh, is 22. quite capable of running three frames off with three frame winning breaks. Twenty-three. Well, Higgins is scoring pretty heavily when he gets the chance. He's already made two fifties and two seventies in this match, and he's only won three frames. Thirty. Thirty-one couple of loose reds but he's just looking at the one that's to the right of the bunch to see if it's available in the left corner not quite sure that may be a little bit tight but 38. he's played for a choice of reds one to the middle and that one of yes it's available 38. Thirty-nine. Hasn't got the angle to go into the reds, but he's got the two loose ones to play for. Forty-six. Left it a wee bit awkward. Just wanted to be a bit further over the table, but he should be okay. That's the shot he can play, pot the red and just stun over past the pink and leave the black, I would think. Well, he screwed back for the blue. He was straighter on that red. But now he's the wrong side of the blue. Important to avoid yellow and brown to get back for that loose red. Whether or no this turns into a frame winning break would appear to depend on the angle that Higgins could get on his colour from this red to open the bunch. Fifty three. Now the red on the right side cushion is stopping him from coming off the cushion and going into pink and red, so he might have to try and just develop that red. No, he could miss it, but he's missed the reds also. Fifty-six. Here's the Higgins family. John Senior on the left. Josephine. Denise Higgins. John Jr.'s wife. And did you see who was in the background, Clive? Les John Dunn. Higgins, 56. But, um, that's the smiling Les Dodd from Southport. What a player Les was and still is, you know, still playing away at Clive. Qualified three times for the Crucible. A former slimmer of the year. And I, and I emphasise the former. I think he won that twice, Sir Clive. Slimmer of the year twice. Yeah, he's going to have to win it again. Anyway. Higgins unsuccessful at the end of his 56 break in opening the bunch. So uh, he's got to get in again to clinch the frame. Pretty good shot because he's put the other red slightly out of play. He knows that Ronnie could quite easily get back into this frame with the five loose reds around the pink there. <laughs> 